This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. Okay, I've just finished uh, editing, filming the Matteo, Matteo Mancuso uh, licks video, which I probably put up yesterday by this point. So I'm taking a, a little bit of a, a break from that. That took a lot of work. So go check that one out if you haven't already. Also, I did just want to say, uh, in case you ever wanted to support the channel in the form of merch, I did get Liana about a year ago to design me these If Daddy Loves Me, Why Is He Always Practicing Legato? things uh if you're interested in that sort of thing um the ideal present for the father who isn't really present um yeah anyway so i did a video i think last week talking about why it is that i don't really like to record with tube amplifiers um i do still have you know a handful of what i think are pretty nice tube amplifiers but um, there were a couple of things that, for me, make them not an ideal part of my workflow. And workflow, I guess, is the main thing uh, that is the engine for why I make these videos at all. Uh, if you're not aware, the kind of whole point of these videos is for that introduction part so that I get to play guitar every day and be creative in some sort of form. Um, basically, they all start with a click track and me just improvising that's kind of how that happens and then i build the track around it um but the the key reasons that i don't really record tube amps too often is because they are loud and what happens when i'm recording with a click track is that they are kind of harder to play in time with because i have to necessarily turn up the click track whatever uh, and and as i play i can sort of drown out the click track and then it's harder to stay in time uh, I guess that would be also true kind of in a studio space, except you'd probably be using headphones, but I don't like to use headphones. I don't like the way that feels. It kind of closes off things. Then, you, of course, you've got the volume thing, which I'm going to get into a bit later here as well. Um, but also, yeah, the, the, the thing is that for me, I'm not in, in the 
kind of heat of trying to just record videos and stuff are going to be able to place a microphone in a, in a reliable way that is going to get me the best results is what I found over the years what sounds really good in the room actually when you get back and listen to what's been recorded even though the take might be fine it doesn't actually really sound as much like it did in the room as I'd hope is basically what I found most of the time now Obviously, you've heard of load boxes, but this is a kind of question for me. I, I started looking up like what's the best way to mic up an amplifier and all this stuff. And I found a, a quite interesting article which had some options, things you should try. And at the very end of the article, it said if you get your guitarist uh, at the two hour mark, maybe you should consider them getting them a drink uh, or some food or something like that. The implication there being that these sorts of things can take ages and ages. Now, if it took me two hours to get a sound that I wanted for a video, uh, I'd probably make three videos a year. The, the whole point for me is that I can quickly get something that is inspiring to play. So, a load box is actually, I think, for a few reasons, one of the best ways to record a tube amplifier. Uh, this is the Fractal X load reactive load uh, LB2 they did send me this years ago um, before this I had a two notes torpedo Ian Watkins um, and those are pretty fine too uh, if you get into the weeds on this I think Cliff the the guy who started fractal and stuff prefers uh, a reactive load with uh, an impedance kind of curve built in I think both the universal audio Oxbox and the two notes have like a smiley face speaker impedance curve, um, which is less realistic if you care about that sort of thing. The Sur reactive load and the X load kind of have uh, just selectable options. You can have like a US type voicing or a, a UK type voicing. It's kind of stuff that is pretty subtle. But the point is that I can record with this at any volume. I just plug my guitar into the amp and then the amp comes out of this into the amp in on here. The all load boxes pretty much work like this. And then you can either have the speaker going through into your speaker, which is not what I was doing here because I was recording at night, um, but you also get a line output. So like the Sur reactive load is the same sort of thing. You can get a Sur reactive load with an IR built in, or yeah, as I say, use something like the two notes or universal audio, which of course have their kind of speaker bits and all that loaded in too. However, what I think is actually a really good idea, especially if you have something already like Helix Native or some neural DSP plugins, because these all have really pretty comprehensive cab sections. Um, so what I was doing was I just recorded out here and I had Helix Native running. And that's what I was monitoring through, through kind of my favorite speaker settings. And what it means is that in the moment I can have my inspiring kind of tone. I also had some delay and reverb on in Helix Native. But what it really means is that I can turn this amp up to a, a level which I've never had it before in the room. And I've never heard it sound like this. Do you know what I mean? Like, so for me, I can get the gain on here up to about six, but the master I'd have to then have at about one or two. Or conversely, I could get the master up to about four or so, but then I'd have to have the, the gain a bit lower down. I can get the amp really cooking um, in a way that I definitely would never be able to do in in the room. I could probably do it if I had like a, a space where, you know, a, a control room and then the amp, because it would just be too loud. The sound pressure level would be too much. The other thing is that I use a condenser mic and that's the thing where I'd never be able to get it this loud either because it would just be clipping the microphone. So for me, I think the load box way forward probably is what I'm going to be experimenting with a bit more. And looking back, this is also how I've got, I think, the best results at recording any amps in general. So like the Mesa Boogie Lone Star, before I sold that, I really cranked that pretty hard through the X load, got the, the volume cooking a bit. And it turns out when you can do that, there are some tones inside these amps, which I didn't really ever get um, because I'm never able to get them to the volume that, that we see things like on that pedal show. You can see the volumes there, 105, 108 in a room this size in a house where you've got other people living and stuff is probably not going to 
go too well if you're doing that sort of thing. But with a load box, kind of you get pretty much all of the good, none of the bad. I can record with the click volume at a level that I want. I'm getting all of the, the kind of nice feel aspects and the chewiness of the, the amp feel, which I, I do think there is maybe a bit of placebo. On the other hand, I think there probably is something really in it. And I'm not taking loads of time to tweak it because it's just quite a lot simpler than using a modeler. Just crank the stuff up. Does it sound good? Yes or no? Crank it back down. And not only that, because it's essentially recorded sort of like a DI without the cab already printed and the delay and the reverb, I can then change that after it's already happened. So I could go into Helix Native now, I could change the cab, I could put on a different IR, I could even move it into a Neural DSP plugin and think, all right, I want to use, I don't know, the Corey Wong cabs and some delay reverb from there or, or something like that. It's, I think, probably, for me, the most flexible way to record a tube amp, I think, and time free because you could do like record a DI and then reamp it and stuff, but that's going to take more time as well. Whereas just recording it, monitoring through Helix Native or some sort of um, plugin where you can load cabs, delay and reverb, and then it's kind of there recorded, ready to go. I wish I'd been doing a bit more of this a bit sooner on. Um, and it's really opened up some kind of more thoughts on this. And this was just guitar straight into amplifier. I think if I stuck sort of one drive pedal in front as well, I'd be able to get even more interesting stuff happening. Um, I don't know. Yeah, the, the one downside to this is that this necessarily probably means you're running your amps a bit hotter than you would in real life because as I say, these are volumes that I would never be able to get anywhere near on stage. And if I plugged in the speaker, um, so you're going to be running probably your tubes and stuff a bit hotter than you would. It's sort of, I guess, a bit like using an attenuator, which is another option. But yeah, this is working really nicely for me. Let me know if you've tried this or you do this sort of thing. Do you think attenuation is the way to go? Do you think maybe like an isolation box is the way to go? Um, do you like the idea of the flexibility of changing IRs and that stuff? Or do you think you should just use a mic like a, a normal person would and figure out actually how to do that? Is it possible to record a tube amp uh, at sensible volumes, do you think? Um, you know, with pedals and stuff like that, I think you can get things happening. But I don't think this kind of goosed up, voxy sound, you know, if you're going to have an amp and you're not going down the modeling route, I, I, I think this is quite a good way to do it, I think. I think it's the best way that I've found at least and most consistent because actually using a cab and microphone for me is totally inconsistent. I could change the cab. Sometimes the sound pressure level is too much for my microphones. It's a whole thing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments if you have any. Go check out that Matteo Mancuso lesson uh, if you want something to work on for a few weeks. Cheers for stopping by.